I need to be very careful in this audience because uh, just earlier, some chap came to our table and said that he was hacking my computer. I said, oh, thanks very much. <laughs> um, was he successful? No, he wasn't, of course. <laughs> you were secure, right? Absolutely, completely secure, yeah. He, he didn't get in, but I did turn off my Wi-Fi straight away, let's put it that way. So, good afternoon, everybody. My name's uh, John Cleland, and I'm the Managing Director of InfoGov. And we are the... Um, we are a London-based company, and we're the owner of the Proteus software. And Proteus was developed originally in the 1990s as a compliance uh, solution. And it's in 2005 we turned that into an IGRC solution. And then about three years ago, um, we turned that into the IGRC. Just one moment. So I need to get this uh, sorted. Yeah, so in 2005, we turned it into a GRC solution. About three years ago, we turned it into an IGRC solution so that we could um, use a client's existing infrastructure in order to prove uh, the validity of the compliance. So today, I wanted to talk to you about how IGRC is important and how it can work with your systems to help you um, combat, let's say, some of the bigger problems that you may have to do with security. So I have this, um, I have this um, presentation of the world's largest data breaches. And <clears throat> I think what this demonstrates, historically, it shows you the scale of the problem to do with breaches in data security. It's running slightly slower than it did earlier. OK. Sorry? Yeah, there you go. So what this is really demonstrating is look at the types of organizations that we have here. And this is showing you based on a historical record. So we can go back through time, and we can see Nobody's immune from these data hacks. I think this is a particularly good presentation because it shows you the scale of the problem. If the US military, which is one of the most um, secure systems on Earth, can get hacked, and Sony PlayStation can get hacked, then really anybody can. So we've got big companies like eBay, Home Depot, big banks, JP Morgan, of course, just recently, and we have Target. Let's say that the Target board may be more interested in information security now. They've all been fired. Yeah, exactly. So if we look at the types of things, you know, we've got accidentally hacked. Most of them are hacked. Unfortunately, we've got inside jobs. We've got stolen computers. We've got lost media. There's a, a variety of different reasons why companies get hacked. Point is, none of these companies, with the resources that they have available, none of these companies had failed a security audit. They all had 27,001, they had payment card industry. All of them had a successful security audit, yet they still got breached. So they were compliant? They were compliant. I can guarantee you that none of those companies don't have some compliance tick. And this is the real point about uh, the presentation that I've got. So why is it, just one moment. So why do businesses that have successful security audits still get breached? And we think it's because traditional audits just don't work. Okay, so the idea of having an auditor, gathering information, Excel spreadsheet, actually performing interviews. It's just not scalable enough. What happens when you walk away from an audit, having done a successful audit? What happens when you walk away? How can you guarantee that that's still working? 
And when will you be back to check it again? Uh, to be honest, we just don't think that it works. So large enterprises with complex infrastructures, it's just not a feasible strategy. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's been our message for a little while now, and we're seeing companies like McKinsey and um, Gartner now saying the same thing. So, better, better audits. We would say, look, whatever international standards you use, whether it be 27001, payment card industry, COBIT, ISF, whatever standards you want to use, there is a huge amount of intellectual property being put into that. You know, I've sat on the working groups, gone through these things. I can see an ISF man smiling over there. I've sat on a lot of these committees, and they spend an awful lot of time going through individual topics and coming up with some pretty good controls. Point is, how can you guarantee that those controls are implemented effectively? So for us, if you genuinely take the international standards that you want to comply with, and you can build them into your DNA, you can guarantee that those controls are actually implemented effectively, 99.9% .9 of your problems are going to go away. And trust me, we have many, many examples where if they had been implemented correctly, they absolutely, the security breaches would not have occurred. So, it is our, oh, just a moment. Oops. So, it is our contention that controls are control. If you look at the controls in those international standards, if you don't test those controls, you don't have control. You think you do, you hope you do, but you actually don't. So our position is every control that you implement, you must create a test for. So here's our top tips for building an integrated GRC system. Number one, you've got to be able to do this electronically. You've got to be able to have enterprise-wide audits. And you've got to be able to do it without a visit. You've got to be able to take your controls. You've got to be able to delegate them around the organization. And you've got to be able to gather the information electronically. If you don't do that, frankly, you're just not going to cover the breadth of a, normal, of a wide, complex organization. Secondly, you need to define your tests for every control. Let me give you an example. If you take the payment card industry, for example, that's standard. You have to create out-of-hours logins. You have to create a report of all of the out-of-hours logins, people that have logged in. And you can use your log management system in order to gather that information. So the way you test your controls is to use your existing infrastructure. So you may lo use log and patch management. You might use vulnerability scanning. We've just uh, integrated a system for a Middle Eastern bank using their vulnerability scanner. And you need to be able to use your existing infrastructure to test each and every control that you implement. So how do you do that then? Well, you need to, here's, a, here's an example. You've got the payment card industry standard over the left-hand side. You've got all of your groups and controls and your controls. And you've got your, you need your log management reports stored against the individual controls. So what we're trying to say here is, look, yes, you're responsible for this control. Yes, you've uploaded your policy and procedure. Yes, you can say that it was reviewed on time. But here's the test results that prove that that control is actually implemented. And for every control inside your organization, you need to be able to do that and use your existing infrastructure to store the controls against, store the reports and the tests against your controls. We think if you do that, 99% of your problems are going to go away. So you need to model your business processes. And the point about that is that you need to understand what's the regulatory and financial impact 
to a particular business process. If an antivirus finds a problem with a server, it knows there's a problem with the server. Proteus knows that server's used for billing. And we know what the financial and regulatory impact of the business might be should that server fail. Of course, once you've done that, you can perform risk assessments on all of your assets in the normal way that you would do that. All those key assets that support those business processes. You need to maintain a business continuity plan, of course, for all of those assets. Now, you're only as good as your weakest link. So you need to be able to audit your external suppliers in the same way that you would your own internal organization. One of our clients purely bought our product so that they could get around the wealth of different suppliers that they had. They literally could not go and perform all of the audits they needed to do. So being able to electronically go through that is, is a key part. 70% according to PwC, 70% of security breaches can be traced back to individuals, people and process. And obviously, any system that doesn't have integrated security awareness training um, is going to have a big problem. So being able to focus the security training is a key part. So for example, if you're, if you're involved in payment card industry, involved in configuring routers, you need the appropriate training. The only way you can do that is to understand who in your organization is doing what with regards to controls. So for us, it all comes back to controls. Obviously, you need to create extensive security board reports outside of IT. And I think this is another key point. If you have all of your controls and you can genuinely say that they're built into your DNA and that you have tested all of those controls, there are always going to be some things that you miss. There may be some malicious activity going on in your network. You've got to be able to actively monitor your network for clandestine activity, people putting stuff onto your machine, people sending data out. For example, monitoring, monitoring credit card information being put in files and sent out on an FTP session. You have to be able to look at this behavior analysis on top of all of your controls that you've implemented. Of course, you need to alert emerging risks in real time, so you need some kind of real-time dashboard. And you need to perform network discovery. In Proteus, for example, we collect every single IP record, and we build a network discovery. So what you're actually seeing is not what you think you have, but what you've actually got in your network. And of course, you can link that to patch management and log management. You can make sure that all of those assets that are unmanaged are dealt with in a secure fashion. Perform regular patch management, store all your system logs, kind of obvious. You'd be surprised how many people don't do it. And of course, you need to dispose of your assets in a secure way. You'd be surprised how much I can tell from a router that you haven't disposed of properly about your organization and your network. So all of these things need to come together to create a, an effective security system. So for, for Proteus and the IGRC product, this is a typical implementation of IGRC for us. We do all the compliance, risk assessment, policy management, incident management, security awareness training, all integrated. And we have a graphical dashboard called Risk View. But we have this deep packet inspection where we can look at every single IP record and rebuild the application logic independent of the applications that created them. And then we can build behavioral analysis around that to look at what's happening. And of course, interface with log and patch management. Most companies don't start from scratch. They've already got some form of log management, patch management, vulnerability scanning. So to be able to look at that and then com compare it with your compliance is a key part. So to give you a view of um, our risk view, We have this relationship browser, which basically shows you graphically um, what's been happening in your, what I regard as a 2D product, the bit that actually collects the data, the boring part. So if we take an incident, we want to see the data breach. How am I doing? And we want to see that it's related to the billing database. We can see the failure report. And of course, we can see it's the chief risk officer. And he's the guy with the black eye 
because he's always the guy that gets the grief, right? He's the guy that gets beaten up. So when we have an incident report, we want to be able to see relevant information about incident reports. Okay? So it's all about being able to graphically understand the relationships between your things. If you take business processes, they very rarely work in isolation. So if I look at the 27001, I want to see the standard. If I look at a router, I want to see router information. I want to be able to see incidents in real time. I want to be able to search stuff. So for us, this uh, relationship browser is, is a key part. Of course, when things get complicated, you want to be able to search. So for example, if you want to look at a retail billing, you can search for retail billing. If I can search for retail billing, and you can see all, how all the relationships sort of fit together, and then you can make it simpler as you go along. So here I can see that this billing process is related, retail billing is related to CRM, mediation, and provisioning. In a similar way, just to show you how IGRC works in reality, if we look at the device network here, as I said, we trap all of the IP records, and we can see that we can build a network discovery, which is actually what you really have inside your network. But if we click on a device, we can link to the log manager. Now, it doesn't have to. It could be any log manager because they have your IGRC interface, which will interface to third-party products. So I can log in and see the log information against an asset. In a similar way, if we click on a link in between, um, we can have a look at the thing. So how much have I got? Okay. So, I'm nearly finished. So if we click on it in between, we can look at network data and look at behavioral analysis. I'm being prompted to finish, so I'm nearly there. So we can look at incident management, inc incident messages, we can look at FTP uh, sessions, we can look at documents and files, etc. So that's us. That's what we do. We think InfoGov can help. And uh, if you'd like to come and s visit us for a demo in the, in the hall, then do so.